Sustainability, or protecting our environment for future generations, is something the City of Cape Canaveral takes to heart. Water is one of our most precious natural resources, and with the Banana and Indian River Lagoons to the west and the Atlantic to the east, it's all around us in the space between Oceanside and Riverside. We must have water to sustain life and cover many of our basic sanitary needs. Have you ever wondered what happens to water after you flush the toilet, take a shower, or use a dishwasher? In the city of Cape Canaveral, it goes to our water reclamation facility, or what we call the plant for short. Let's take a tour of the plant and find out what happens after you flush. When wastewater first arrives at the plant, it goes through a screening process called pretreatment, in which large objects are removed to prevent clogs and backups. You'd be surprised at some of the items we've found in the bar screen. Toys, diapers, towels, and even money. Grit, or sand and dirt, is then removed from the wastewater by a mechanically induced mixer. The mixer spins like a tornado and uses gravity to force the grid downward to the conveyor belt. This grid settles on the conveyor belt, where it sits until it is removed and sent to the landfill. At this point in the process, the wastewater hasn't been treated much. Next, the wastewater travels through a pipe across the channel. As it flows, the water passes through several holding basins. This starts the biological nutrient removal process which makes the water safer for you and for our local environment, including the lagoons. The secondary treatment phase begins as the wastewater enters fermentation. The wastewater is treated in four small fermentation basins before flowing into the first anoxic basin. Let's take a few seconds to talk about bacteria. Normally, you might think of bacteria as something bad that could make you sick. However, they actually play a very beneficial role in the wastewater cleaning process. We like to call them bugs. Now back to that first anoxic basin, where you'll see the bugs in action. Inside, mixers keep the wastewater suspended, so the bugs are always in contact with the harmful materials we want to get rid of. The bugs help break down waste by removing bad nutrients like nitrogen and phosphorus. If these were left behind, they could cause uncontrollable algae growth in areas where reclaimed water flows into rivers or the ocean. Next up is the aeration basin. Air is added to the wastewater as it's churned by large turbo mixers. This feeds the bugs, which need oxygen to survive. Once the wastewater leaves the aeration basin, it flows through a large pipe into the second anoxic basin. Here, submersible mixers, which are like underwater propellers, help keep the waste in motion. After the wastewater has passed through this stage, it enters a re-aeration basin, where the bugs are fed again. So far, we've seen raw wastewater enter the plant and go through the bar screen, the mixer, and five treatment phases. All of these steps are critical to producing reclaimed water that is safe, so we can minimize the impact we have on our environment. But none of this could take place without the hard work of our staff. So we're going to take a short break to talk about the people behind the process. As you can imagine, Cleaning our water is a very important job. Our dedicated team works day and night to make sure the city always has clean water. There are no holidays for the water reclamation facility. The plant is operational around the clock, 365 days a year. And staff members are needed on site 16 hours a day to keep things running smoothly. Ready to get back to the tour? Let's go! After the wastewater leaves the re-aeration basin, it's sent through an intermediate pump station and to the clarifiers. The clarifiers are two large tanks that ensure a non-turbulent environment that allows solids to settle and leaves clear water at the top for filtering. 
The water in the tanks remains calm as a giant rake rotates and scrapes sludge toward the center of the basin. The surface of the water is skimmed to remove a material called scum. In between the clarifiers, the sludge is sent to a digester tank where it settles and the clear water is recycled for treatment. Some of the sludge is then cycled back in to treat wastewater, while the rest is sent back to the digester before heading to a belt press. The water is then pressed out of the sludge and the remaining solids are removed from the site and taken to a landfill. As wastewater exits the clarifiers, it heads off to the chlorine contact chambers, where the final cleaning process begins. The water is first filtered through sand to remove any solids and allow clean water to pass through. The last step in cleaning the water is disinfection. As with a swimming pool, chlorine is added to kill any leftover microorganisms or bacteria. The cleaned water travels slowly through a contact chamber, allowing the chlorine time to react. If discharge is sent to the river, the chlorine is removed using sulfur dioxide. If the discharge is sent to one of the holding tanks, the chlorine is left in place. The water in these tanks is now officially reclaimed. While humans and animals shouldn't drink reclaimed water, it's a great resource for lawn care or landscaping. And that's what happens when you shower or flush in Cape Canaveral. Our team makes sure the water is safe for our environment by reducing pollutants, nitrogen, and the accumulation of muck that affects the lagoons, other surrounding bodies of water, and local wildlife. This is just one of the many sustainability efforts your city undertakes so we can make sure Cape Canaveral maintains its natural beauty and continues to be the space between waves and wonder.